assassins. Sneak attack into the stinky dragon. Throw back our latest thirst quencher. Wait, where did you come from? No, please don't. Ah! Hey, I'm okay. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> that actually wasn't in the script. Gus just got attacked by yeah. the studio. <laughs> Previously, our adventurers reached the top of the wind mule and wound up face to face to face to face with a giant three-headed warg and a vengeful Weegor. After a harrowing hunchback hash out, the party escaped the tower with Crystal in tow. Next, they scrambled up some steeders, trekked through tunneling terrain, and arrived at the smoggy snare lands. Cobble up a cup of coffee and let's continue this Crancidocious Chronicle. Is that how you say it, Micah? What is that word? It's not a real word. Okay. <laughs> what? Did you throw a fake word? It's a fake word from Micah. Thank you, Micah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Tales from the Stinky Dragon. My name is Gustavo Sorolla. I'm your dungeon master, and I'm joined by our four players who are... Barbara Dunkelman, and I play... Elga von Brath, and she is a female half-elf and buyer barbarian. I'm Blaine Gibson, and I am uh, playing Chip Haney, a tiefling rogue. Or does he possess me? Who's playing who? Oh, I don't wait, know oh. anymore. <laughs> and, I play, and I play Chris Damaris. You're playing Chris uh, Damaris? By Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Who's being controlled by Farney Farney, <laughs> the human cleric. Oh, man. I'm, I play, uh, my name is John Reiser, and I play <laughs> Matisse Comfy Susus, an Eric Cochran monk ghost. A weird energy and today. there is a weird energy in I'm here today. A sleepover. I'm going to shoot you guys down with an arrow right now. We got a list of 100 <laughs> questions that were submitted online via the Stinky Dragon subreddit, Discord, and some written by our writer, Micah Reisinger. So this question is submitted by Micah. What does your character want to be remembered for? A oh, great question, little Micah. Um, wherever you might be, <laughs> little boy. Um, I'd like to picture yeah, little Mike writing in. Dear Stinky Dragon. Stinky Dragon. What does our character want to be remembered for? Yeah. What will your character's legacy be? Chip has had a, a, a history of being an assassin, but he doesn't want that as his legacy. I think his, his love for Carol. Yeah, maybe a family. Who knows? But he just wants to be remembered for being a good husband. And he lost his wife, so he's <laughs> off to a bad start. Did we, ever, did we ever clarify how long were Chip and Carol married for? Who's to say? Okay, okay. I, I actually, I don't know. No, no, just uh, curious. Time just flies when you're having fun. Yes. <laughs> Is that why... Uh, Chip and Elga have such like a sweet relationship because like it's like father daughter like the daughter he never had. Oh, I feel like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's Even mostly because you like... both like to steal money and keep it. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> she keeps my secrets. I keep hers. I don't think Elga really cares to be remembered for anything. She's already lived so long that it's like she kind of realizes that life is sort of more, somewhat meaningless. You know? Elga needs her victims not to remember her. Yeah, that's what she needs to not be remembered as someone who goes around sucking the blood out of everybody. She meets. Imagine whenever Elga meets someone that she turned into a vampire. It's like running into an ex. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, it's awkward. awkward. I think like maybe nowadays with this team, she has a little bit more purpose, but Ooh. I don't really think that she uh, has a legacy of any I like sort. that. What'd you say, Barney? Barney, he wants to be remembered. Barney wants to remember. <laughs> I'm staring at Chris, and he just went. No, I did that. His face just went yeah. neutral. I was like, just the he just sound wants of to be white remembered. noise was facing you. No, no, he just wants to be remembered. Yeah, but also, yeah. Uh, uh, he 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 wants to be remembered for finishing his legacy, his great quest. Which is he still found he's, it. He's still trying to remember oh, it. Oh, okay. he's, yeah. he's a U two song. I was really hoping you were going to say Barney just wants to remember. That's <laughs> 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 like, the question. Doesn't have. <laughs> Good memory. Matty. Matty wants to uh, just simply be remembered for uh, accomplishing the perfect croissant. Oh, oh oui, oui. Which I am still uh, seeking the perfect recipe. So actually creating the perfect croissant, not like creating your own signature pastry yourself. No, no, but no. Just, just the perfect of that Item. That's a good goal. You know, you kind of go through this passageway into the side of the mountain that kind of leads you through the, the trail to get to the snare lands. And as you are going through, the smell of fresh air begins to fill the tunnel before you. You press on and eventually find an exit out of the trail. It's difficult to know exactly how long it took to traverse this passageway, but it wouldn't be a stretch to say the better part of the night. 
The starless night sky is blanketed with clouds overhead. The air is thick with a smoggy haze and the ground is dried and cracked. Every now and then you hear a pop nearby like some kind of bubble bursting. I'm afraid I have no experience with the Snailands, only tall tales. Well, I can't be sure, but I imagine it will be dawn soon. We should probably dismount and tie Steeders up near the cave. If they were to get spooked in this haze, we would be left to walk all the way back to Mask Hatton. Mm. The alchemist dismounts, but then it stops abruptly. I, I can't move. Oh no. A muddy bubble bursts from the ground below you all, filling the air with a sickening stench. The ground shifts and you feel the foul dirt swallowing you into the earth. What? This is stinking sand. Gasp! And as a kid, one of your one of like your core fears you're taught to have through media is the eventuality of you finding a uh, quicksand, uh, quicksand yeah. and, your and horse, dying there. No, no, and, your horse getting stuck in it. Well, oh. both. Uh, Atreus. But uh, Atreus. <laughs> Atreyu? Atreus. 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 The band that was shoot. But uh, it was the biggest shock to find out it's not a thing. Yeah. You, it seemed like it's something you had to know about. Yeah. Well, it's a thing. It's just it's very uncommon to come across. Is that the case? I thought it was like it's not even like a thing. I, I think it is a thing. Is okay. A thing. Um, a little help, friends? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, only, only he's in it? So the alchemist is the only one standing in it. All of you, your steeders are in it. So are the steeders sinking? Yes. Oh, no. Obi, no. This isn't combat or anything, but I would like to roll initiative. Good call. Just to kind of like keep track of everyone and how this is all going to go. Six. Thirteen. I rolled a one. 18. And this stinky, sinking, stinking Stinky, sand? Stinking sand. sand. Like, what is the consistency of it? Is it like wet? I feel like it's just sinking sand or whatever. Quicksand. Quicksand. Like aromatic quicksand. Correct. Yeah, it's just like a sand, but it smells bad. Matid, you had an 18. You go first. What do you want to do? Matid's a little bothered to have to, like, save this walking person. (laughs) At this point, you've sank about two feet into the ground. Or your steeder has sunk about two feet in. Okay, well, I fly up in the sky. Okay. Later. <laughs> and I guess Bye. I go for, I think Mati would actually go and get Elga off of her spider. Cedar. Cedar. What's my carrying capacity flying? It would probably be the same as your typical carrying capacity because it's based on your strength. Your strength is a 17. Oh, strength. How do I calculate that? So normally these are, this is dealing with encumbrance, right? So with a strength score of 17, a medium load for you is between 87 to 173 pounds. 174 to 260 is heavy. Okay. And you're saying that I can, what, carry a medium load? Yeah, because I would say you wouldn't probably be able to fly very well with a a heavy load. Yeah. And the alchemist is like a a larger fellow. I mean, it's a a human. We'll say that he fits in that 87 to 173 range. I'd still go for Elga. Okay. I'm not, I'm not attached to this I'm alchemist. Sa- I'm 75 pounds. Yeah. So, you're good. yeah. so yeah, I pick up Elga and Elga and I are... Uh, well, you have to actually make a strength check to try to, to make pull a uh, Elga out. So uh, roll a strength check for me, please. Oh, man. 11. It's a real struggle, but you do manage to pull Elga out. Matid and, and Elga are off on their adventure now. Goodbye, Avenge everybody. me! <laughs> Elga's steeder is still sinking in, as is uh, Matid's. I know we need these steeders because we don't want to walk I back. I mean, that's subjective, right? It's up to you guys. I have a feeling we're going to be left without our steeders. I'm so I attached to I don't them. know how to save a steeder. All I can do is Obi. save a small girl. Is that all for you, uh, Matid? Yeah. Okay, Elga, what do you want to do? So, Alchemist is on the ground being sunken in. Oh, yeah. Let's see how far uh, the oh, Alchemist here. is sunk in. I thought you already did that. No. Oh, the Alchemist is four feet in. Uh-oh. That's a three. Yeah, but it's plus one. Oh. How tall is the alchemist? He's actually nine feet tall. I guess never mentioned it. <laughs> uh, we'll say like five, ten, five, nine, somewhere in there. Oh, what so, a short king, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm currently in Matid's arms up in the sky. Talons. Talon. Did Matid say they put Elga down? No, just no? up in the sky. Okay, no, okay, yeah, you're We're just up in the sky. Just doing drone. Rescuers down under style. How would it work if I threw a rope down? Because I like... I could probably lift him up. <laughs> That's not how physics works. I know, but it's not how physics works because Matid's holding me. Uh, right. You could throw a rope down and someone could grab it. Then if Matid dropped you off somewhere, you could try to like okay. pull them. Yeah, maybe Matid should be dropping me. But we're, we're doing helicopter like uh, evac style right now and you're dropping a ladder. Drone yeah. strike ready. But then you'd have to carry both of no, us. No, I'm saying, yeah, but to, but to get them to have the rope and then we can land. Okay. Matid, do you think I should go for the alchemist or for one of our companions? I'm just yelling it into your ear directly as you're holding me. <laughs> yeah, uh, that sounds like a plan to me. I said that there's two options. Oh, oh sorry. 
<laughs> but he couldn't hear you. Uh, well, considering that the alchemist is like off his steeder and in the sand, I'll go for the alchemist. Yeah, that's probably smart. So could I drop a rope down to him? Just because I want to be a little difficult today, I'm going to make him make like a dexterity check to see if he grabs it. Oh, he rolled a two. Let's see, what's his modifier? Do you really need this guy anymore? You drop it. Maybe he's panicking, but he can't quite seem to get a grip on the rope. It's like that when that panic sets in and you're yeah. like frantically trying to grab something, but not really making any progress. Could I tell how like what the area of the stinking sand is from where I am? You can make like a perception check if you want. Okay. I will too, because I'm looking. Only a 10. Don't worry. I'll roll a 23. Excellent. Nat 20. I'll say since you both were in it at this point, you can kind of roughly make out the the edge of where it is. And you would definitely have to if you were setting down Elga outside of it. So yeah, you both can see the edge of it. Is he close to the edge? Like to a point I could reach him? Yeah, he's really close to the edge. Let's say within like, I don't know, two or three feet. Matilda, if you drop me near the edge, near the alchemist, I can maybe use one of my tools to pull him. Like a, my axe or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mati just gives a nod and swoops down and drops the Elga off at the edge of it. But then could I go back to like being up above everything? What's the have enough movement? I'm going to do that. I have a javelin. Okay. Could I use that to kind of reach out to him and try to pull him? Oh, I thought you were going to off him and like put him out of his yeah. misery. Just like in the neck. No. <laughs> this is a better death. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dark. Oh, <laughs> yes. So dark. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, why not? You you reach it out there. I'm going to make him make a dexterity check again because I did I set the precedent by doing that but earlier. He doesn't have to catch anything. He's got to grab it, though. <laughs> no, she's aiming to impale him. <laughs> what do you roll? She rolled a two That's again. That's not fair. <laughs> I'm right there. Yeah, he's just panicky. He's four feet in. He, he can't get a grip on it. Could That's, I reach him? Like, reach Like, out? with my hand? How tall are you? You're small. I'm very small. I'm four foot seven. Someone who's listening to this and they're four foot six, they're like, wow, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say, uh, sure, why not? We'll, we'll say make a, a strength check. Uh, with frustration, let's say you just reach out and try to grab him by his cloak. Gosh dang it. It's only on the 11. I'm rolling low today. It's all right. You managed to grab him, but he just sunk in a little too much for you to be able to pull him out. Well, that's probably all I could do at yeah, this point. Yeah, I would say at that point, yeah, your actions are probably pretty much up. Barney, are you casting Toll the Dead? No, that was an accident. <laughs> What's everyone's level at right now? I'm up in the sky. Elga's on the I'm edge. I'm right by the edge near the Elka. Yeah, so it's it's you three, essentially. Yeah. And, and you two are is cedars. four feet deep. Correct. Oh, wait, I got to see how deep you are, Barney. Okay. Don't worry about me, Barney. Well, his steeder, not him, right? Right. You, your steeder has sunk three feet in. And how big is the steeder? Yeah. There's a, like a, a, a pretty, yeah, a pretty big spider. I mean, you're able to to ride them as mounts, so they're they're a good size. And the alchemist is four feet in. And how far away is like the safe area from us? You're about four feet from the edge. Uh, oh wait, actually, you have to roll a perception check to see if you can tell where the edge of it is because okay. you don't know necessarily. <sighs> Nineteen. You're pretty sure you're about four feet from safety. Man, I don't have any rope. So the steed, is there something attached to it that's like longer than that distance that I can ho hold on to and try and jump across so I can still hold on to my steed? Something on the steeder? Yeah, like the saddle or like a rope tied to it, you know? Like the, what's the thing that you like? Reins? Reins. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but those typically aren't very long, you know? They just have to go from like the bridle to your hands. So how long is it? If it was from one end to the other? It would probably be roughly... 18 inches for one, and then you double X, you go into the other one. So if it's uh, one big loop, we'll say it's about three feet. Dang. Well, can I hop the four feet? Like get up on top of the steeder, like on the saddle, balance on mm -hmm. it standing, and then like try to make a four foot jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Why not? It's D&D. You can try to do whatever you want. Okay. I'm going to try and hop. I'm going to try and hop. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, stand up on top of the steeder. First of all, just make a dexterity check to see if uh, you can hold your balance while mm. standing on it. Matita's is watching with like eager anticipation to see how this turns out. Mm. After seeing uh, Barney, after seeing Barney jump out of a window, <laughs> um, I'm, Matisse is very curious about this old man. Uh, yeah, that seemed maybe you forgot. Maybe in your past you've done this before, Barney. Have you ever stood on a on a mount like this? I don't recall. You got a background in rodeo? I don't recall. You're pretty good at it, so maybe maybe you have at some point. You're able to easily maintain your balance while standing on the saddle. Go ahead and make it a athletics check to make this jump. That was a six. I guess I could use my inspiration die. So just so you know, the rules for like a standing long jump like this is typically if you like do a running jump, you can move a number of feet up to your strength score. However, if you do a standing long jump, you can only leap half that distance. Okay. So your strength score is 
15, so you could do a standing long jump of like seven or eight feet. So you'd be able to do it. You just got you got to make an athletics check. Yeah, I, which you just I, did. I did it. I rolled a six. Now, are you happy with that? Well, you know, I I think a four foot jump shouldn't be that hard because I've already stabilized. So it's just a four foot jump. Let's do a four foot yeah. jump right here. I'm right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, but also a six is kind of low. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. no, you're fine. Really? Yeah. You yeah. think so? Yeah, I think you can do it. Really, John? Uh-huh. You're not you're not messing Give with me. You're kind of smiling. Nope. Okay. Just a happy guy today. John's just yeah, he's just pleasant. I'm, today. John's never pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're saying today. <laughs> um there's a first time for everything. I like, I like this version of Chris. I like this. Do you really think uh, like a four foot standing jump is no big deal, Chris? From a height? Mind you, Barney's carrying 98 pounds. All right, I'll use my inspiration. Yeah. Dang you're, it, Gus. You're wearing chainmail, if I remember right. I'm using yeah, my, he is. I use my inspiration die. Here it comes. Come on. Low, low roll. Low roll. Let's go, baby. Come, come on. on. Come, come on. on. Two. Give me two. Two. Nine. <laughs> hey, that's, that's more than six. Correct. Okay, you stabilize yourself and very confidently take a leap towards safety, but you fall just short and you're still in the stinking sand. You're closer to the edge than you were before. You hit the sand and you sink two feet in. Go marbles. How close am I to the alchemist now in the sand? Are we near each other? The alchemist is a little closer to safety than you are. But yeah, you're within arm's reach of each other. I want to try something. I don't know if this would work. Can I create water underneath us to push us up? Like, float us up? Would that, like, loosen the sand? Make a nature check. Nah, water always makes sand more more sturdy. Well, it might, like, make it less sticky. That's an eight. It's, by the way, it's stinking sand, stinking. not sticky sand, just for clarity. So you made an eight? Yeah, you think uh, if you make some water under yourself, you'd be able to, like, tread it and swim through it a little easier. <laughs> I don't believe you. It's not alive. You know what? Because it's just the right mix of wet and dry that makes it stick. I feel like you're just not staying in character and you're making too many Chris decisions and you need to make Barney decisions. Okay? This is all about staying in character. All right. Barney can't sleep. (laughs) Uh, uh, On himself. (laughs) I think I've gone and fumbled up. Night, night. You guys are going to have to save me. Shoots. Trust us. Get, grab hold of my blanket. What? <laughs> what? Or I guess I could use my walker. That's within close enough. If I fling my walker forward, because that's something that me and the alchemist could both hold on to. Ooh, ooh, and, 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 and maybe like whack it into the sand in front of me and then pull down and, and forward so you kind of pull yourself up Wouldn't with it. Wouldn't your thing just sink itself? He's on the edge. I'm on the edge. Mm-hmm. So if I stuck it into the good stuff, like into a, say there's a tree root or something, I could wet it, you know, and then pull. And, I, and, and with Alchemist's help. I like watching Gus while Chris does this because I like to watch him. He is He's desperately <laughs> like gears are grinding to figure out what to do. Also, when Gus said that the water would help you get out, <laughs> he shook his head behind your back. <laughs> yeah, Chris is the only one who cannot see my face. I looked at Blaine and John and just gave the no. All right. He uses his walker to slam into the ground and pull his chain mailed body out. What Barney, happens, stop, Gus? Stop making puddles over there. <laughs> I, I do have a, a, a side question that will mm-hmm. somewhat influence this. Is your walker a weapon? I don't remember. It is my weapon. It's his weapon. So it does have like spikes on the end or I something, think in the right? Art that's, that's that we have. Yeah, yeah it's, so it's, it's like, like morning stars. But isn't it covered right. in like little tennis balls? No. Make an attack with your walker. Hmm. He attacks the ground. 16. With wow. a 16. That ground what's no, what's, that what's the guard? The ground's AC. The ground's <laughs> AC is ooh 17. No. Oh. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, you're able to strike out and hit solid ground with your walker. You start to try to pull yourself in. Make a strength check to see if you can pull yourself. 14. Since you aren't that far and you aren't that deep in the sand either, you're able to pull yourself to safety. Elga sees this happening. She goes, oh, so that is what old men's strength is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and is it in such a place where the alchemist can also grab it? I don't think so. That seems like that would be weird for two people to try to, to grab it like that. I feel like that mechanically wouldn't work. Okay. Maybe you could try to reach for him. Normally it's a walker, now it's a crawler. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. Little jokes. Get out of here. <laughs> All right, chill. Barney's out? Yeah. Everybody's out, but, but well, the alchemist. alchemist. Okay. How and far you. am I from the alchemist, and how far is the alchemist from land? The alchemist is only a foot or two from the side. You from the alchemist, you're eh, maybe like another four feet away from okay. the alchemist. I give Obi a pat on the head and say, have fun in spider heaven. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> I forgot you named yours. Yeah, we were after, after uh, King Obi, the uh, the true king. That's right. 
his yeah. other his alternate name was uh, Peter the Steeder, but that's good too. Thank you. I jump off of Obi, and then I just use the alchemist's head as a stepping stone, oh, no! and then I jump onto safety land. You're safe probably land. gonna sink him down deeper. He'll be fine. Plot armor, come on, Elga. <laughs> make a. Well, I assume you have to stand on your steeder. So you need to make a dexterity check, like Barney did. Okay, sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, you're able to balance yourself fine on the steeder and Ta-da! make a an athletics check to see if you're able to make the jump. Oh, his poor head. And Hallie, oop, 15. You're able to jump and land on the alchemist's head, <laughs> pushing him down further another... He's going to be under. Four feet. Ah. Oh, oh, no! So, so that means he's, what, two feet into the stand? Well, no, he pushes him, but then, like, jumps off. So you have to make a second athletics check for your second jump. You probably okay. could have made the jump without jumping on his head. Yeah, but where's the fun in that, Elga? All right, and then my other athletics check. Oh, that's a 19. Oh, yeah, you land no problem. Good on cushy uh, uh, platform to jump off of. You land uh, with a flourish on the solid ground. So, so is Alchemist fully under the sand? Yeah. Yes. Barney looks down. Hmm, we all made it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a uh, hemp and rope, 50 feet of it. How is he going to grab it? Uh, I'm looking for, like, is there a tree branch or trees or... I'm just trying to find any sort of like large, like like a spear or something. Didn't somebody have a, a spear? Javelin. Elga's got a javelin, javelin in, her, in her hand. Hey, Elga, can I borrow that there javelin from you? What are we going to do with it? I'm, I'm going to put rope on it and then submerge, not pointy side, down into the stinking sand and save the alchemist. But you don't know where he is. Maybe you're going to stab him in the eye. He's one feet away from me, and I the pokey end is going to go towards me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So can I take her javelin? Uh, first, we meet, needs to make a blood pact before you take it. Okay. <laughs> Wait, with with Chip? Yes. Okay. D- okay. Prick your finger with the end of my javelin and place your finger in my mouth. <laughs> I will. <laughs> that is the blood pact from the, my place the of subtlety residence. is going out the window. Can I prick the palm of my hand and you just give like a like a, a face mush? Yes. Okay, that sounds less awkward. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Blood pact has been received. Thank you You're for your service. Don't you have to do the same in return, Elga? No. Does, how? Wait, does not the pact, uh, you know... Well, it's because it belongs to me, so it's like you're borrowing it. So in exchange, I take a little of your blood. Okay, like a down payment. Okay, all right. <laughs> a blood down payment, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 all right. Absolutely. Okay there. There's interest on it as well if you don't return it. I way. hate banks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to take the javelin. I want to, on the pointy end, I want that facing me, and I, that's where I want to, like, use the spear's head as kind of, like, a uh, place that I could, like, put the knot, right? Gotcha. So that it didn't, like, slip off. Gotcha. Honestly, the, the javelin might be long enough. I might not even need the rope. But I go ahead and tie it on just for safety reasons. Sure. You don't want to pay that interest for that lost uh, javelin. No, oh, it's a very valuable javelin. Yeah. Uh, you know, Elga values it deeply. You, uh, might have, you might have to pay like a pint or two. Okay, well, don't want to do that. Uh, that's nice. <laughs> so I take the javelin, and then I just start poking around with the dull end. Oh my God. I find something lumpy, and I... How far does he push him down further by pushing down on it with a right. javelin? Man, what kind of check is that? Make a perception check because you're trying to see if you paid attention to where he was when you killed him. 18! <laughs> on your first attempt, you stick the javelin pretty close to the alchemist. Please grab this. Okay, finally, <laughs> he has a good roll. He's able to grab on to the javelin. You feel, uh, like, resistance on it. Okay, and then I just start lifting him out. Yeah, make a strength check. Can I help? Sure. Appreciate it, Barney. All right, yeah. strength check. That's a six. Plus, Bernie help! Plus, eight. Shoots me. There's so much sand on top of the alchemist. Maybe it's making him super heavy. Give it another yank. Okay. I'll, I'll I, give you that. How about this? Heave-ho! Matid notices that the sad little mortals on the ground are having a hard time and swoops down and, like, feet on, on Chip's shoulder, just starts pulling with, like, a big old swoop. Sure. Ah, more blood drawn! Yay! <laughs> I rolled a 14 just what? now. Uh, go ahead. You roll a strength check as well, Matid. So I'm bleeding from my palm, bleeding from my shoulders. Is, is Barney able to? Uh, sure. 22. Nat 20. Wow. Yeah, the three of you really uh, try, and this time it's it's almost like too much effort. You know, you, uh, <laughs> you stumble a bit because it's so easy to pull the alchemist out. You pull him out from the stinking sand, and you see he's got the javelin firmly 
in his mouth. In his grip, in his, with his <laughs> mouth. That's exactly that's what we're going to say. He was biting onto the javelin, and you pull him out. I thought you were going to say firmly in his left shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I walk over to Al. Say, oh, we thought we lost you there, Al. How are you? And give him a couple pats on the back and get that stinking sand out of his mouth. Yeah, as you pat him on the back, like sand is, you know, coming out of his nose and his mouth, which Gross. was open. Is this guy a werewolf? I don't think you all have talked about that, but you don't have any reason to Why suspect that. Why do you think that. he's a werewolf? No, it's just he grabbed it with his mouth, kind of oh. like a dog would. Oh. I think it was just funny. While they're doing that, okay. got my eye on me. Uh, where, where are the spiders at? Steeders. We're steeders. They're Dead. steeders. Barney, they're in the great web in the sky. Can, do they react to stuff? Can they, like, if I toss my blanket, would he be able to grab it or something? Like, what do you mean? Like, with its mouth. Like, oh, oh, oh. I thought you meant, like, with its legs. Like, <laughs> with its thumbs. Like, yeah, it spider thumbs. thumbs. Uh, spider sure. Thumbs. Yeah, why not? Grab hold of my blanket. Make a dexterity check. Yeah. Why not? It's a nine. You toss it out there, but as your blanket gets close, the steeter sinks a little more and the, the blanket falls just short. It would have caught it, but it sank just at the wrong moment. At that point, we'll say all the steeders begin slowly dipping beneath the, the surface of the stinking sand. I salute you, Obi. You are the best steeder strider I've ever had. They all raise four arms and shake four angry fists each on you. <laughs> I salute you. Obi uh, gives you a thumbs up as it uh, sinks slowly below we the stinking sand. We don't thumb or if it's something else. <laughs> <My thumbs. laughs> a Terminator reference. Oh, gosh. Well, they've gone on to a better place. Yeah. Underground. <laughs> what does uh, what does the alchemist smell like? Sulfur. Rotten eggs. Yucky, yucky, yucky. Do we all smell like that since we all, I guess, were in it? Yeah. None of you as bad as the alchemist since uh, he was fully submerged. Hey, alchemist, you should have should have just gotten out of that there uh, stinking sand. I don't know what you're doing goofing around. It's not a kiddie pool. <laughs> Gosh. Can, um, I, I, Matid would like to actually stay above ground and uh, just kind of flying for sure. a bit. Eye in the sky so that we don't walk into more stinking sand. Now, Mati just doesn't want to walk in more sand. Could Barney look around and see what's around? Around this stinking sand, there's, you know, kind of like a forest and some trees. And you realize, like, as you look to the north, it's almost like the land starts to turn into a bog. Like, there's stagnant water and the land kind of begins to narrow to a point. Uh, and off kind of to the northeast, you see like a small wall. Do you guys want to head to that there wall? It's a man-made structure. <laughs> Is it a man-made wall structure? Um, maybe before we start venturing on, maybe Matit should do some like looking ahead to see if there's any other pockets of stinking sand. Reconnaissance! Reconnaissance, that's the one. Yeah, Matit does just some circling around just to make sure there's nothing of a... Uh, looks like the stinking sand. Make a perception check. Love to. 17. Here in the immediate area, you don't see any more stinking sand. Now that you have kind of an aerial view, you see that, you know, you're really beginning to enter like a pretty serious bog. Like there's lots of areas that you have to kind of wade through water to get across and like little bits of dry land between them, pocketed with trees, small islands, and various other small walls built in the distance. But does anything look like a structure worth heading to? Nothing stands out particularly. So are these walls just like kind of like the edge of a town type wall, like a border? They look like uh, old relics, ruins, yeah. Gotcha. Mm. I wonder, because we're heading towards the snare lands. We're right? in the snare lands? Correct. And I wonder if like maybe the people who live here live like not in typical structures? Well, he's saying it's like ruins, like not an actual like enclosed structure. Correct. Uh, it's just like walls. one wall. Mr. Uh, Owl? Do you recall where the dragon said he lived, Drago? Or where, where he should be heading? Or know many places where Skelligon might live? Maybe a place where you get a burger? <laughs> <laughs> we should continue to the northeast, past this bog to find our destination. Maybe we should create a bit of a mountaineering rope tether so if one of us falls in we can all pull the other out we all fall in. i was gonna say if one of us <laughs> falls in we all fall in so you uh elka had rope i had rope Wait, i think a bunch of us have rope okay yeah you guys gonna do that um no <laughs> <laughs> barney if it makes you feel safe i'll tie a rope around you and then hmm? tie one around me all right now i'll go first okay I'll, I'll, I'll use i'll use my walker and if i hit i hit some uh some squishy, stinky stand. Or like a landmine. <laughs> <laughs> You'll all just blow up. You know, D&D landmines. So, yeah. to, so to clarify, Matita's 
in the air on Overwatch. Barney is taking point. Yep. Chip is immediately behind Barney, and then Elga, I assume, is behind Chip. Actually, yeah. I think Elga's playing jump rope between me and Barney. <laughs> <laughs> it, did you do you tie the alchemist to you? Uh, uh, the, the alchemist declines. Oh, are you okay. sure? So it's That's just, my man. So it's just a Chip and Barney party. Alchemist, if you remember, I saved you from the stinking sand. Hmm. I have some other memories as well. Do not forget, he, he dropped you in the sand feather. Okay, you're flying away. Yeah. They're just screaming from the yeah, sky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, it's Mr. Bird, can you show us the path forward? Mr. Bird. Mr. Bird. Matite doesn't respond at all because Matite has no idea who the hell you're referring to. A giant white liquid comes from the sky. <laughs> yes. It, it's some kind of air stinking sand. <laughs> Barney pulls on the rope. Help me. Uh. Mate just heads northeast. Okay. And then Barney like uses Walker and it like to help look for soft patches of sand. Yes, but if you remember, Mate did look for stinking sand and did not find anything else in this immediate area. I didn't share that information. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> uh, so yes, you are, you can do that, Barney. Could I walk with the alchemist so I could ask him a question Ooh, as we're going? Sure, why not? Have you ever heard of a blood pact? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you as we walk to our, you know, impending doom. So your son, Henry, correct? That's his name? Yes. How long has he been at this school for? It's been something I've been thinking about for a while. Freak. Oh, is, is that his name? Sorry. <laughs> Son's Henry. <laughs> the academy's name is Freak, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He just started. Just started. How long ago? Just about a week ago. A week? How long ago were we in this school? Not too long ago. Uh, you all were in the school two days ago, maybe? Oh. Mm. No, wait, yeah, that is a different school, though. You were in Lofton College. Yeah, Lofton College. Uh, right. Uh, Henry was sent to Freak, yeah. which is a different school. Just because we saw him walking around and he was trapped in your office. So I'm wondering how he got there, if he was supposed to be at Freak. He's a little scamp, always up to something. He takes place after his old man. Reminds me of me back in my day. Where did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be leading? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Did you have any more questions? No, it's just been something I've been thinking about because I'm wondering how I could potentially be in two places at once. It just seems very strange. Suspicious minds. Salutations, my stinky supporters. If you love this show and want to support us, then check out the Stinky Dragon soundtracks wherever you stream music, or you can pick out some Stinky Dragon merch at store.roosterteeth.com. On top of that, we've got Stinky Dragon puppet videos you can watch on social media, including a new series called Dungeon Dive you can find over on TikTok. Hey, everyone, I want to take a moment to remind you RTX 2023 is happening this July 7th through 9th. Join us this summer for a memorable weekend at our Camp for Indoor Kids featuring 15 plus live shows, special meet and greets, exclusive parties, fun panels, and much more with guests ranging from your favorite RT groups like Funhouse and Achievement Hunter to friends like Therapy Gecko, Super Carlin Brothers, and new rock stars. RTX 2023 is an event you won't want to miss. Badges for this three-day fun fest are available now for as low as $55. I'm super excited about RTX. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you there. Head over to rtxaustin.com, get more information about the event, and buy your badge. It's time for Dolls, Drama, and Death in Barbie Didn't Do It, a six-episode true crime parody role-playing event from the hilarious cast over at Must Be Dice. Barbie's on the run, accused of murdering her new boyfriend, Kenneth, in cold blood. Now, her best friends, Georgette and Candy, must don their detective hats and help clear Barbie's name before the real killer strikes again. This might mean tracking down and investigating Barbie's ex-boyfriends, the Kens, who know more than they let on. Kind of. So subscribe to the Must Be Dice podcast feed to listen to Barbie Didn't Do It right now or watch the full video versions on youtube.com slash at funhouse2. And make sure you head to roosterteeth.com and become a first member to watch episodes early and get access to the exclusive Barbie Didn't Do It post show. Barbie's fate depends on it. So you all proceed to the Northeast, taking a wide berth around the stinking sand. And you come up to that kind of like old ruined wall to the Northeast, kind of blocking the path. The ground kind of funnels to a choke point here with water on either side of you to the left and the right. And this small wall in front of you, blocking the path to further land. So a wall, how tall is it? It's not very tall. It's like 
two and a half feet tall, maybe. That's not a wall. That's like a fence. Fine. Like a, a, stone like a, fence. a ruined fence. What do you do, Barney? The water, it's like a little choke point, and then it opens up it's afterwards. It's like, like an isthmus. Do you know what an isthmus is? Ah, What's yeah. an isthmus meet you? It's my favorite holiday. Merry isthmus. Eh, hey, Matita? No, yeah. I don't know okay. what an isthmus Come is. Come on. Come it's, on. it's like a where like a narrowing line. Like think about like think about Florida, like how Florida connects like up to the rest to. of the United States. It kind of like <laughs> is that narrow strip of land with water on either side, like except Panama. much smaller. That's like Panama. Peninsula. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So like a tiny little island, but it's connected. Could I do two things? I have this ability I haven't been using called uh, Vigilant Blessing, where I just give one creature I touch advantage on the next initiative roll. Can I just give that to myself? That's a spell. You know, it's an ability. As an action, you give one creature you touch, including possibly yourself, advantage on the next initiative roll the creature makes. The benefit ends immediately after the roll or refuses this feature again. Oh, huh. that's a cool. Yeah, and I can use it for like forever. Yeah. So the benefit. I'll, you could just always just have it on. Yeah. Huh. In fact, from this point, can I just, so I don't have to continually call it out, can I just keep that? You got to call it out. That's yeah, I think how you have to call works. it out. Just remind me after combat. So uh, I'll do that. And then can I also like look around and kind of like poke the sides of the water near the isthmus. Yeah, like he's just testing the water. It's like whenever I took Skipper out to go potty. To see, see, if the, it just it's it's suspicious. Suspicious. Okay. Yeah, you poke at the water. This narrow strip of land is probably ten to fifteen feet across, so it's pretty easy for you to get to one side and the other. And you stick your walker into the water on both sides. Make a perception check, I guess. Investigation. Investigation. There you go. That's better. Make an investigation. No, it set. wasn't better. <laughs> <John. laughs> one's int, one's wisdom. Not 20. There you go. You didn't need it, big boy. Yeah. yeah. You pull your walker out and it doesn't seem anything out of the ordinary. Your walker's maybe a little hotter, like a little warmer to the touch than it was oh. before. Oh. Okay. Your walker's hot. There's something <laughs> hot in the water. Could it be like a natural spring underneath the ground? Could. It be. was bubbling and popping. Mm. Oh. And I thought those were Barney's toots. <laughs> they might have been. They could have. <laughs> hmm. Can I do like the classic tracker? Like I get down on a knee and I feel the ground thing. <laughs> yeah. What's make that a, do, make, a, make a survival <laughs> check. <laughs> What's that do? Tells me what I need to How's know. your wisdom? <gasps> Neg- negatives. <laughs> <laughs> Survival's a wisdom check. Mm, a six. <laughs> what does he sense, it's, Dungeon Master? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's definitely terra firma. Uh, <laughs> just as I suspect. I put some in my mouth and you'll. Mm. I see Chip doing this and I go, What did you discover, Chip? <laughs> Tell the group. <laughs> I am not a cow. What? Yeah. Oh. I don't like the taste of grass. Oh, uh, is that what you just eat? That's about it. Okay. I dust my hands off. Okay. Uh, so they've you, this. The party has been faced with a two and a half tall stone wall, and thus far, no one's gone over. Well, it. you're welcome to fly over. I love it. I already have. Uh, it, right. Like canonically, Matid honestly would have been like miles away right. at this point. Well, <laughs> let's proceed cautiously. You you get maybe behind a tree so we get some tension on the rope in case something. Yanks at me. This Please. might be some sort of illusionary magic. We've yeah. encountered this before. Can Elga try to hop wait. the wall? I can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't wait to like read the Ma- the module and <laughs> see the the party approaches a plain wall. There's nothing here. At least it's not a door. That's our new, Elga wants that's to. That's our new thing. Fences. <laughs> fences. Elga wants to hop the the wall. Yeah, Go. make a an athletics check because it is a little a little tall. Twenty four. Oh, you show off. Yeah. Hi. Elga easily hops over the wall with no issue and lands on the other side. Do I see any, like, loose stones or anything on the ground oh, from the wall? definitely. Definitely. Can I go pick one up? Yeah. I want to investigate it. It's a nine. You go over and grab one of the stones that has... I, I assume you're looking specifically for, like, one that's fallen out yeah. of the wall and yeah. not just, like, some random rock. Yeah, you go over and grab the stone, and as you touch it, an earthquake starts shaking the Jesus, area. Jesus. I was setting up for a Pink Floyd joke. I was going to say, all in all, it's just another brick in the wall. <laughs> all three of you make dexterity saving throws. I am so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. No, all, the three of you that are on the ground. Oh, well, you're, you're, you're still close. Even though I'm on the other side of the yeah, wall? Yeah, you're close so, by. Okay. Uh, Lemon? Is this something I could have seen? It's not like a trap per se. Like, I think that's normally what that works okay. for. So I would say no. So I don't get advantage. Yeah. Okay. Nine. Ten. Well, lucky for you, ten was the number. So you're fine. However, Chip, 
maybe since you're bending over, your you know your center of gravity is tossed over. Uh, uh, you fall to the ground, and the ground slams in your face a couple times. You take two points of bludgeoning damage, and you're laying prone on the ground. Oh, no. The ground slams him. Yeah, like it's like an earthquake. A uh, lo- very localized oh, earthquake. Oh, so he just kind of slams into the ground. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you realize that as this earthquake is happening, the wall is like popping up out of the ground to a greater height, and then back under the ground. Oh. A subterranean structure. Wait, so it goes up and goes back down? Yeah. Like there was more of the wall that was beneath the surface that has been exposed for a moment. I say we did. And that was triggered by you picking up a brick that had fallen off already. Yeah, and then slamming my face into the ground multiple times because of the earthquake. Do I see anything on the other side of the wall? Yeah, on your side, this bit of land extends for a little while. To your north, there's a small island that's overgrown with trees. To your northeast is more land with one big tree on it and some more small walls. And then to your southeast is another island with a tree. Uh, yeah. Just a tree. Yeah, and then some land. The one to the northeast sounds interesting. One big tree and a bunch of walls. Do, does the wall look different on this side that I'm at? No. Okay. Are there any loose bricks around? Sure, yeah. Well, should I pick one up and see what happens again? I don't think so. Are you sure? Hey, can, can I? Should can I put I... one on the, maybe pick one up and put it down the wall? No. Oh! There's an idea. I can didn't I, do that. Before you do that, could Barney help pick up Chip from the ground? Sure. Oh, thank you, Barney. All right, brace yourself. I'm going to try it again. Can we find a tree to hold on to? Just hold on to There's me, like Barney. There's like some small shrubs on your side, but no like big trees. Okay. Could I try to pick up a brick and put it on top of the wall? Yeah, but the second you touch the brick, everything begins shaking violently once again. All three of you make dexterity saving throws. Shoot. Uh, since you were anticipating this time, Elga, I will say your danger sense works. Okay. Cool. So I get an advantage on it. Yeah. I won't need it. I rolled an 18, but I'll roll it again. 15. 18 for Elga. 21. Yeah, maybe you all were kind of bracing yourselves this time, but the earth begins shaking again. The wall shoots up and down a few times, but you all manage to hold yourselves standing. And do we notice anything on the wall? Is it just like flat wall? There's no like door or any other... Or symbols? Yeah, things. Make an investigation check. A 15. Nothing stands out. It's just an ancient dilapidated wall. And it's just a series of these bricks that have fallen out, right? Like it seems like these bricks used to be on the wall maybe. It seems like it. it's the same kind of same kind of material, same kind of stone. I just just for clarity, I don't know if we ever said bricks. I've said like rocks. I don't okay. know that like they would have used bricks necessarily. It could be just like a stone wall. Okay. I just want to make sure what we're picking up is what the walls made yeah, out of. Yeah, same kind of material. Okay. What land are we in? What's this called? Snarelands. 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 Okay. Well, Lots of traps. El- Elka did see these other three locations that we could try to venture towards. Yeah. yeah let's do that. This um, wall might not be. I think we should go to the northeast. I agree. I mean, I think we should go to the northeast. I agree. I like the way Elga says northeast. 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 Okay. Still learning the accent. <laughs> northeast from this place? Uh-huh. Um, from where There's Elga an is. island with a single tree. There's a single tree and a bunch of walls, I believe. Yeah, a couple what. of small walls similar to this one. Okay. Barney, how are you going to cross this wall? Can I wave at Mat- Matib? Sure. Can I wave and see if Matid sees me? Matid is just nonchalantly circling and humming a, a, a Parisian tune to themselves and has not noticed Barney. Well, it looks like it's just <laughs> me and you, Mr. Chip. Yeah. All looks right. like Matid is disassociating <laughs> once again. Matid has, is just like, has, has very much recognized that you guys are going to continue to be doing absurd things on the ground and has no desire to be a part these of These are it. ground problems. These yeah, aren't these sky are problems. These are ground problems. Good teamwork, my <laughs> team. Keep an eye out. You're doing great. <laughs> Could Barney get a running start and try and hop the wall? I guess we should do it together. Or should we untie? Let's untie. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to hurdle the fence. Try not to touch it. Y'all are cowards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I just jumped right over yeah. it. You, you two should do it tied. Okay, I think you should. <laughs> yeah. I think you should. Okay. All right. What the heck? Synchronize was, your watches, Barney. I was more thinking of uh, uh, us holding hands and driving off the cliff. <laughs> Thelma, <laughs> Thelma and Louise. Thelma and Louise. Yeah. Yes. All right, go, Thelma. A classic. Right. See, <laughs> that one doesn't end well. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that movie. <laughs> The movie uh, just cuts out. Well, <laughs> driving off a cliff. I mean, you know what you're describing. We don't Spoiler. know what happened. Yeah, you don't know. Uh, sure, my hand of... is hovering over the athletics track. Well, let's think about this. You two need to kind of do this in sync. Yeah. Um, I was just trying to figure out how to make this like an intelligence roll of some kind. Acrobatics. I'll say, let's keep it simple. Let's both of you make a dexterity check. You ready? And a one. And a two. And a three. You already rolled 15. it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you all didn't even roll it at the same time. Nine. 
Chip, I guess, starts counting out. All right, on the count of three. And as he says that, Barney just takes off running. <laughs> and uh, Barney clears the wall easily, but this startles Chip, who uh, doesn't realize that they're supposed to be going. He starts running as well, but the line becomes taut and pulls him smack dab into the wall. All three of you make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, Elga, you have... Oh, because uh, he touched the wall. Right, you have advantage on it. Okay. 12. Four. Oh, no. I won't need it. I'm, it's an 18. Okay. Barney, you think everything's fine. This all happens behind you, so you don't see it. But the <laughs> wall did it! The wall begins shaking, or the ground begins shaking, and it knocks you to the ground, and you take two points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, mother. Chip, you're still on the other side of the wall, the where everyone started from. Okay. So I'm good? You need to get over the wall. You, need, you still need to get over the wall. Oh, right. But uh, the last cur- earthquake. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, you, okay. You, you, you made your dexterity save. You, you knew what was coming. All right. I'm going to hurdle to this wall. I'm going to limber up. Think of my old high school days and the track in the fields. Go roll something. Okay, or you tell me what to roll then. Make, yeah, make the dexterity uh, check. Yeah. Okay. No, I appreciate you waiting. Yeah. It's just waiting. I was being pff, nice. That's a... Oh, 22. Oh, yeah. This time, you don't have to wait for Barney. You're not trying to synchronize or anything, so you're able to easily hop over the wall. Maybe no I did problem. a bit of a flip in the air. Yeah. Sure. Why Hopefully. not? Yeah, you got, you got a good roll. Okay. What and kind of flip? Ford flip? Ford flip. Yeah, yeah. this probably makes the most sense. And, and then I and then I land and I pop up and I go up up. You wow. put your arms out. And then I and then I look to the judges. Elga, what do you rate that? Elga is wildly impressed with this. Oh. She goes ten out of ten, and she holds up her both of her. The hands. judge from whatever country that is give you a ten. <laughs> <laughs> I found a question mark. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that wall. Whoa. Okay. Long okay. rest. <laughs> now for the next ninety minutes of this. Mo- <laughs> now for the next ninety minutes of this module. Uh, <laughs> You all have bested the wall. Aha! The fence. No, we have to clear remind you. This is a fence. <laughs> Two feet. And we head northeast you, you, to the You kind of caught me when I said it was a wall, because like I knew there was more underground mm. that was going to come out. Ah. Ah. Uh, so a little, little peek behind the DM screen there. The three land lovers are now past the wall, and Matid is flying overhead, providing overwatch. You know, now as you're, you know, progressing a little further into the bog, it's getting really hazy. It's getting a, a little more difficult to see. Maybe it's because of the bog. There's like smoke and haze permeating the, the atmosphere, kind of obscuring things a little bit. Mm. As Elga said to the party, there is a small gap, a little bit of water, and then on the other side, more land to the northeast. Kind of like a peninsula, it looks like, with a tree and a couple of similarly looking relic walls. Okay, well, I want to head to the water. Yeah, you walk up to the shore, and you can see the land is maybe 10 feet across. Or, like, this stretch of water is between 5 and 10. Like, say, 7 to 10 feet across. How deep? Make a... Let's call it a nature check. Ah, a 2. Must be 2 feet. Yeah, you think it's about 2 feet. (laughs) 2 feet. And this is, like, there's no way to go around it very easily. No, you're on like a, the, the end of this. It's almost, almost like it's a peninsula and there's just water on all the sides of to it. To get to the island, you'd have to go through the water. You know, Matisse just, Matisse just calls that, Dear Dave, <laughs> <laughs> after all that stinking sand, I, I could use a good wash and I want to just jump in there and wash. use my tail as a little propeller and just go across and doggy paddle with my motor tail. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, you, uh, you dive into the water. Can I brace in case something grab, like, grabs him? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, because you're attached. Oh, you're still tied. You uh, dive into the water, and, you know, as your head pops up from the water, it's not very deep. It's three feet, feet maybe. Oh. You immediately begin screaming in pain as the water scalds you. Oh, no. I mean, I'm tiefling, so I have fire resistance. I feel like that's a temperature resistance thing as well. Does that help me at all, Gus? Please, God. Fire? Fire is the opposite of water. Yeah, but this is like hot So you're weak to this. But, like, no, it's hot. It's hot water. Gus is just smiling. So I got four, heat resistance. Four points of damage. Yeah, fire resistance. Okay, so two points of damage because like, I'm resistant. But does he still get to the other side? Yeah. You make it across, but you, four points of damage. Four two, points two, of damage. Two, four points. So you're on the other side. I just, I like, if he's on the other side, that means that he got in the water and he's just screaming ah! as he goes through. <laughs> and then he's, he gets to the side, just like, come on, guys, the water's fine. Okay. Well, it, it wasn't very far. It was only between seven does and ten feet across. Does he still smell? Does he still? You, you can't tell. You're too far. So, okay. I turn around and I say, uh, hey, Elga and Barney, the water is a little warm. So, like, if you want, like, a day spa treatment thing, hop right in. <laughs> but you might kind of go through, like, like a Pierce Brosnan in that volcano movie. Dante's Peak. Dante's Peak. Thank you, Matid. Um, <laughs> it was Dante's Peak. Yeah. It is a masterpiece. We. Oui. So just be careful as you cross. Maybe maybe make a boat 
I am a huge fan of Pierce Brosnan. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got robbed during James Bond. Goldeneye was a masterpiece. I would agree with that whole Hasley. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you uh, swing the rope over that tree, and then we can... Uh, so I can drag you through the water. No, no, and then you pull it up, and then maybe we swing across. Oh, Georgia, the jungle style. Brendan Fraser, also a great and underappreciated actor until recently. No, what? Matisse. Okay. <laughs> in there, in, in there tr you said there's trees on this side? Oh, uh, there's one big tree, but it's probably not for a bit, right? Correct. It's not too far away. It's maybe another 10, 15 feet away. You know, I feel like this tree is going to be a trap, but I want to honor Barney's fun. Yes, and so then I'm going to go and see if I can tie this here rope to this here tree and pull my friends across. Wait, so I think you two said two different things. I want to clarify what's going on. Barney said, like, toss the rope over a branch. Uh -huh. You said tie it around. Like, do you want to tie it around no, no, the no, trunk? No, no, toss it over a branch. And then give it a go to yanking. So that there's, like, leverage to swing. Or, or if I, like, use myself as a counterweight, yeah. then I could just, like, bring, you know, the whoop, and then you guys, hey, hey all yeah. over. So you untie the rope that's on you yeah. and then toss that rope over the branch. Yeah. Okay. And you're holding on to it being a counterweight. Well, I guess he's already tied to you, so that's convenient. Yeah. 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 You uh, toss the uh, rope over the branch, but it doesn't come all the way down. Like, the part of the rope that impacts the tree or that touches the tree appears to just, like, get stuck there. Oh. Yes, I'm going to climb up this here tree. Oh, be careful. Chip goes over and begins climbing the tree. Uh, make a strength saving throw, Chip. Oh, this no. is going to be an end. It's it's a living creature. I, I should know better by now. Uh, you know, I'm running real low on health, and that was only a seven. You uh, go over to climb the tree, you know, and you put your hands on it and get real close to it, but you immediately become adhered and stuck to the tree as oh. well. All right. So we had stinky sand and probably sticky trees. Bit of a situation <laughs> here, gang. Uh, the tree... It's sticky. Could Elga attempt to run and jump over the water? Yeah. Make a, make, let's call it an athletics check. 21. You take uh, like a good 10 feet of a running start and you're able to jump the seven feet across. I guess Barney will do the same. Make an athletics check, Barney. Elga continuing her streak Shoot. of not showering. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Barney uh, takes a running start and <laughs> it begins trying to uh, hop over the water. It looks super easy the way Elga did it. I'm coming. But you misjudge the jump and you fall into the water oh. in the middle. Barney, oh, no. you need to jump when you get uh, to the edge. Two points of scalding damage. Can, can, can I, am I what able to swim, get across? Yeah, yeah you, you can get across. And you give him two? Uh, ouch. It's, a, it's dice. a dice. I roll. No, that's cheating. So in D&D, &D, you roll a dice off and for damage to be. I'm a super kind DM, by the way. I show you Did all the rolls. Did not hear my teeth drink fire like resistance. <laughs> very nice. Back screech. I'm going to untie the rope from me. <laughs> Okay. Well, actually, can I cut the rope so it's not attached to the tree where it's attached to the tree? Just and cut the rope so there's no longer an attachment to you. Yeah, right. to the tree. No, no, to the tree. You're not that close to the tree. Well, I guess can I approach the tree and then cut? Yeah. Oh, you went through the water? Yeah, he, he, yeah. Yeah, he okay. fell in and then crossed And then, like, well. cut the thing so, and then, like, if the tree's sticky, I don't want to be attached to it. Okay. And here you go, Good Chip. call. Yeah. Here so, you, you know, I do love nature. I do love the wilderness. Some may call me a tree hugger, but in this particular case. I like to picture Chip is like stuck face first into the tree uh -huh. and like addressing everyone <laughs> behind him. So <laughs> I'm just a little stuck here. <laughs> and I do love trees, but I do not love this tree so much as to just stay stuck to it. So please help. Could Elga try to pull Chip off the tree? Yeah, make a make a strength check. Could Barney help? Can yeah, I, sure. Uh, you can uh, roll. You won't need to. I rolled a nat 20. Ooh. Or 24. Yeah. Elga, <laughs> Elga puts a hand up as Barney approaches. He goes, no, I got this. Stay Barney, back. Barney starts walking forward. And it's already to happen. <laughs> Elga pulls Chip off so strongly that, like, pieces of a bark are adhered to Chip's face still. That's like, funny. You, you ripped part of the tree off, and it's now just attached to Chip as well. Ah, camouflage. Ah, <laughs> very good. You know, there are moisturizers that take care of that. Your skin looking a little rough. Yeah, yeah. Can I take a little taste of the tree sap? Is it like like a, what was it called? You know, up in Canada. Syrup! Yeah. Maple. Maple syrup. Yeah, you uh, dab. I guess you probably get some like that's uh, yeah, still I just attached to the bark to on your face. Tongue, just go, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, make a strength saving throw. Oh, on no. your, on your oh, leg. No. Oh, no. <laughs> if his tongue gets stuck to his own face, does that mean he can't talk anymore? I said, uh, uh, oh. <laughs> it's a crying one. Yeah, your tongue temporarily gets stuck to your face for just a moment, but you rolled a 21 on your strength save. See, you're able to pull your tongue away from the sap. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of sweet. It's not, you know, 
as sweet as syrup you've had in the past. Maybe it's not refined, but yeah, it's got a, a slight sweet taste to it. So basically, this tree is ultra, ultra sticky. Dude, if our uh, community ever gets around to updating uh, Wikipedia pages for the new characters, I need uh, under chips that he has a strong tongue. <laughs> the alchemist uh, walks up. Oh, I think I've read about these before. I believe those are called treacles. Nerd. And <laughs> <laughs> treacles? Treacles, yes. Trees that have a very sticky yellow viscous sap that prevents insects from boring into them. You know, I've got some, like, potions of healings that I've taken, so I assume I have those bottles still. Can I, like, bottle up a little bit of this ooze? Make sure, like a, why not? Like a yeah. sticky bomb? Yeah. Mr. Al. Can, Al, is the sap good for anything in particular besides being yummy? As far as I'm aware, treacle sap has not been refined for any other use. Oh, I'd like some. Can I also put some in a container? Sure, why not? Now what do we see now that we're on the other side of this water? We see that we're obviously next to the big tree. Yeah, it's still pretty hazy, but you think you can see a little further to the east some solid land. It looks like, you know, not islands anymore, but actual solid land that proceeds. The alchemist sees you looking says, I believe that is the route to our destination. Oh, how convenient. Let's go that way. Hey, guys, stop licking trees and stuff like that, and let's go this way to the okay, east. Okay, okay. <laughs> you said this is an island, so is the land that's to the east not connected? Correct. It's another, like, small gap, another seven feet or so. Okay. So how are you guys going to get over this uh, gap? Of, you know, I think Elga's got this one. She's going to go ahead and go go, your, go first. Not me, her. <laughs> so I guess we start walking that way? Well, it's water. Well, we have to go there and then get to the water. Oh, right? yeah, the edge of the island. Yeah, this island that you're on isn't very thick. That tree was kind of in the middle. It's at most 40 feet across, maybe. And you said there's other walls around it, too? Yeah, on the northeast side, it looks like there's another wall similar uh, to the one you passed already. A fence. I have a feeling there's going to be something that triggers these things to go up and stay up. Yeah. But let me, I guess, go to the edge of the island and try another jump. Yeah, you make another running long jump. Make a, what do we call it, an athletics check there. 14? 14? Yeah, it's it's not very far. Your strength is pretty high. You're able to deftly jump across the gap and land on terra firma on the other side. See, everybody, it's not so hard. What are you, part frog? You, you're just hopping around uh, all over the place. No, I'm just regular human girl. Oh, yeah? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why would you assume? <laughs> Nothing to be suspicious about. Yeah, sure. You yeah. just keep saying that, and I, okay. Did mm -hmm. Chip give you back your javelin? No, I think he still has it. Oh, Man, those go. interest payments are still uh, accruing, aren't <laughs> they? It's got a little sticky sap on it. Drip, there you go. Drip. <laughs> All the blood. Oh, she's on the other side of the water. Oh, well, let me throw it to you then. <laughs> or you could use it as like a stick to, to jump. Pole oh, vault. yeah. Pole. I want to pole vault with her javelin. Don't you get it stuck? <laughs> so I've done long jump. I've done But if you hurls. pole vault, won't you leave it behind? Unless no, he you, doesn't use the spiky side. You carry it with you. Carry it yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, I'll, I'll like pull it across. I'll just use like a, I think uh, Animal Crossing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank Bob, you. Thank you for contextualizing I, Animal Crossing New Horizons. I also want to point out. I don't know why or how. I have four of these in my inventory. Oh. You're, they're, they're, I, you're, they're like, like, you're like a porcupine. I think yeah. the way you can describe this is they're like the magician little thing where it's like they the, click out. Yeah, it's like a, like a pen sized thing that expands <laughs> oh, out. Very cool. That is. Cool. All right. Yeah. Go ahead and make an athletic. Elga loves close hand magic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a 22. Oh, yeah, you pole vault easily. Maybe you uh, you spent some time when you were uh, younger on, in track and field yeah. doing some pole vaulting. you dress like that. Okay, gold medals all around. Dad would be so proud. Mike Haney. That's my <laughs> papa. Mike Haney. Yeah. Barney, everyone's left you. Well, the alchemist is still Oh, there. the alchemist. Yeah, the alchemist. Trips and falls and drowns. <laughs> <laughs> Without Chip stepping on his head, he's able to move a lot more freely. And he makes the running jump and clears the water and lands on the other side as well. Yeah, what were his rolls? Just uh, his role was a 17. Why are you pressing? <laughs> no reason. Stop being combative with the dungeon <laughs> we, we want him to succeed. We want him to come. Oh, some of us do. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll try and make the jump. All right, make an athletics check. Mm, nine. <laughs> Uh-oh. You make a running start, but stumble. You stub your toe on Ow. a rock, and you splash into the water. Oh. A nine's better than a one. Four points of scalding damage. Four. <laughs> But you're able to uh, regain your composure quickly and scamper across the water and rejoin your party on the other side. You're probably pretty worse for wear now. What if we did like a, uh, anybody got any heals, like a, po uh, not a potion, but like a spell that they could b burn and it not take a slot or anything? Don't look at me. I refuse to look at you. I look away. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Here we go. We could take a short rest. Do we have time for that, Alchemist? 
We must hurry. We're running short on time to free Frankenstein. You all have reached the other side of the boiling bogs, and amidst the smog, you see two things. Uh, a bleary sun peeking past a hazy horizon, and a huge reptilian skeleton with immense jaws and bony wings. Oh. Ooh. It's the Skeleton. Is that the Skeleton? I think it's a, the remains of one, maybe, right? It's, yeah, is it uh, alive? Like, uh, 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 all four of you make investigation checks, because everyone's kind of asking questions here. I'd say at this point, Matit is close to the party, but still hovering. Okay. 16. 18. Does it too? <laughs> Elga's still looking the opposite direction. <laughs> 14. Mm. Hands on hips, proud. Yeah. So everyone except for Elga notices this. This is not Skelegon. This is like, this appears to be the corpse of a different dragon. Mm. And it seems like the smoky haze that's permeating the bog seems to be flowing out of the orifices on the skull. And you can tell it seems like there's some kind of light coming from beneath the skeleton. Oh, like a, like a domicile? Like someone is in there with a like a fire. Ooh, it's hard to tell. Just some like some a light source. Light. Oh, okay. Like what's what color is the light coming out of there? It's obscured with the haze, so it's hard to tell. It seems kind of somewhere between white and yellow. Okay. You know that giant skeleton dragon skull looks pretty inviting. You guys want to go investigate? What dragon skull? <laughs> I turn her around. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, oh. Chip grabs Elga by the shoulders and turns her 180 degrees, so she's oh. facing the correct direction. That's pretty. Uh, <laughs> do, do we see any other signs of life in this area? Like uh, trails where feet have like walked repetitively? Make a survival check. Ooh, 24, not wow. 20. Yeah, you think you see like some drag marks, some dragging marks. I was going to say drag on or leading up to the skull. Dragging marks as in like, can I, with a 24, do I recognize like how, what size the creature might have been and where it was coming you from? You don't know that it was, it was a creature necessarily. It's like something was dragged. So there's no mm. footprints, you know? It's just like you just can tell. You divot can, in the same. Correct. In the, yeah. in the dirt. Mm. So it's not like you can discern any further information there. Okay. Matite approaches the skull. Okay. And looks in one of the orifices. Uh, which one? Probably the closest, like, like a nostril. Yeah, you look in one of the nostrils, and inside you can see that light appears to be emanating from somewhere inside the skull. So it makes it kind of hard to see. It, it blinds you a little bit. In addition to the light, you see like shadows and uh, maybe some some further depth into the skull. But it's 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 a little hard to see. I can't see like, is it so illuminating? You can't even see the source of what is emanating the light? Make a, let's call it a nature check. That's only a six. You're really not sure what the source of this light is. It's, 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 it's a little blinding. Mateed motions for the party to come join. Okay, I look in the other nostril. And then we're like two people at like a state fair where they have the cutouts of like the, the big buff guy and then the lady in the <laughs> bikini and they're doing the poses. Make a nature check as well, Chip. Oh, I got a plus one on this. This is going to be a good one. A nine. <laughs> it's, it's really hard to tell much. It's kind of bright and blinding you. Okay, I'll go come look over. Yeah. As well. Do you want to look in one of the nostrils or who you, if you want to look at a nostril, which of these uh, dum dums do you push aside or do you want to look in? Excuse me. Uh, you, you, Mr. Rolls a six, or do you want to uh, look in an eye or something I'll else? I'll look in an eye. Okay. Yeah. You uh, kind of boost yourself up and look into an eye. Make me a nature check. Uh, I don't see anything. It what looks like a light. You rolled a six. Sure did. What is this who's on first thing that we're doing here? We're all just failing. <laughs> all right, Barney, your turn. Look. Yeah, I guess I'll go look. Do you look in the other eye or do you push one of these people away? I'll look in the other eye. All right. So all we, right. Got all, we got all the main holes covered. There's the thumbnail. Make a nature check. 16. There you go. As you're approaching to look into the eye, you realize that the dragon's bones are made of some kind of crystal. Oh. Does it look to be the same crystal that is the one we have? Not quite. Okay. And you notice that the heart is missing from this dragon. Oh, that's sad. Also, while you look through, you realize when you're looking into the skull, you're not quite as blinded as everyone else. The cataracts are helping you here. And you <laughs> see that there's a, a path through the jaws leading down to a, a tunnel that heads underground. Mm. Oh. oh. Got throat. Oh. What do you see, Barney? There's a secret passage in the head. Cool. Of the dragon? Yeah. Oh. It goes down into a basement. Can I pull up that scroll that had the um, autonomy of the dragon and stuff and see if there's anything I can discern from that based just like... Anatomy? Yeah, autonomy. I was like, what? Autonomy, anatomy, anatomy is yes. what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pull it out and you can clearly tell that the heart is indeed missing. Shall we go down in here? Is Barney going in the eye socket? Yeah, is it like a thing that we go into or is there like a opening that we open? Do we open the mouth? Oh, yeah. You could try opening the mouth if you want. Okay. okay. Here's the thing. 
Now, if we fail this, the jaws are going to clamp down on well, us. Well, we're all going to do it together. I hate this, but okay. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna help lift this. I'm gonna deadlift Mateed this jaw. shoves Chip towards the mouth to help. Anyone who wants to try to open the jaws, make a strength check. Okay. I want to help. Oh, Felix is doing it. You got it. No problem. <laughs> uh, Hopefully. That's a 20. Oh, I only rolled a 10. 11. 12. Come on, gang. Put your backs into 20. it. 20. Uh, yeah, luckily for everyone, uh, Matid is feeling really buff. Maybe uh, all the flying helped Or the get- lack of doing anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just referring to the lack of uh, damage that I've taken? Just, this- just the fact you, <laughs> that you've just been up, up flying around singing. Lovely. It's Bird a strength. lovely day. Yeah, you're able to prop open the jaws, and you can clearly see the tunnel heading underground. I well, told you. A basement. And there's no reason for me not to believe you, Barney. I go in. Me too. Okay, I let the whole party go in. It sounds like Chip, Elga, Barney, Mati. Yeah. In that order. Okay, yeah. You make your way down through the tunnel for a bit. It's kind of claustrophobic. But then after proceeding for a little while, the tunnel opens up into a a giant cave that's shimmering with natural crystals forming uh, on the walls, the ground, and the ceiling. To the south is a large pool with purple fluid, and then to the east, the cave branches off into, like, some narrow tunnels. Echo! Echo. Like a purple fluid, you said, right? Yes. Okay. Gus stinks butts. Gus stinks butts. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid. Oh. Such a child. Such a child. I'm sorry. What does it even mean? What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we came in and we're sort of facing the east. To the east is more cave. I bet that pool is probably like stomach acid. Stomach acid. So we should watch out. Oh, could we go <laughs> look at it? Or could I, I'll go, go look at the purple liquid? Yeah. Oh, I'll go with you. With the illumination from these crystals, as we have entered, we'd be, I'd assume we'd be able to see? Okay. Yeah, it, it, seem, it seems like it. But is it dark at all? Like, to the point that, that would limit our view? No, nah, I, I wouldn't say so. How big are these dragons? Huge. Pretty so we're yeah. inside the dragon. Well, you, well, you no. went in through the jaws and then went through a tunnel that went down underground. Gotcha. Yeah. So like we're in, not in its belly. No, no, no. no, no. Okay. This no. is no. technically skull, dragon. Yeah. Gone, this is gone. a uh, uh, dragon. Wait, are, was it? The, a skeleton was, is the Skeleton was the is name. The guy, Correct. Yeah. I'm so sorry. You're okay. right. Okay. Who, who checked the uh, I think Elga. And, me, and Barney yeah, went. And Barney went with me too. Can I skip a stone? Yeah, let me talk to them and you can skip a stone if you want. So it's a pretty sprawling pool of sparkling purple fluid. And there's a few like small islands of rock and crystal. Then you can see to the southwest here is a pile of smoldering bones and skulls. To the southeast, it looks like the pool flows into another chamber. The bones are not in the liquid. They're just like next to it. Yeah, they're like on little um, bits of outcropping of land. Could I pick up a bone and dip it into the purple? Oh, they're they're kind of like across the way. Though. Uh, they're like okay. on the other side of the pool to, down to the uh, southwest. Is there anything that I could grab to dip into the purple ooze? Barney's got a walker you could test with. No. Elga, did your parents ever teach you how to skip rocks? Uh, I know how to skip, and I know how to rock. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Are you ready to rock? <laughs> El- <laughs> Elga van Rock. Yeah. There's nothing immediately nearby. I mean, there's crystals growing out of the walls. You can maybe, like, try to break off a piece of crystal. Javelin? Your javelin? I'll yeah. try to break off a you piece of... You got four of them. Well, they're very precious, don't they? <laughs> Clearly, if I make people do blood pack. You name all four of your javelins. <laughs> yeah. Could I break off a piece of the crystal on the wall? Yeah. There's multiple colors. There's like red ones, green ones, blue ones, yellow ones. Do you have any preference or just Ooh. you really do you care? Kyber crystals. Let's go with red. You, uh, you know, reach out to break off a piece of a red crystal. Then the next thing you know, you're not standing where you were anymore. <laughs> I saw this coming. You're back by the cave entrance again, behind the party. But still inside. Yeah. <laughs> just teleported. Uh... Yeah. From our perspective. Yes. Did I become a bat just now? <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, Mati just goes, Ooh, it was, it was, uh, it was beautiful. Finally. Could I run back to where I was and try to grab a green crystal? Yeah, you run back over very excitedly and grab onto a green crystal. Roll me a four-sided die. And was it, when it, it did the red crystal, when I touched it, did I transport or when I broke when it? When you touched, touched it. it. Okay. Yeah. Three. It like stings your hand and you recoil away and you lose a one hit point. Lose a hit point? Yeah. It's like one point of damage. Okay. Again. You phrase like, that weird. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm like, sorry, do sorry. I lose my sorry. max no, no, HP? No, no, no. You, uh, you, you take one point of damage. Okay. So 
Green is spicy. No touch. Don't touch the green. Ouchie, ouchie. Poison. What was the other one you hit? Red. 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 They're going to make me teleport but uh, back um, to the front. Is there a purple crystal? Mm, no, but you could touch red and blue at the same time. What? Oh, to make it purple. Why did that break your brain, Blaine? Uh, <laughs> Why did that? That was like, that's simple colors. What I, does a uh, yellow do? You reach out and grab onto a yellow crystal. Roll me a constitution saving throw. Oh, dear. I have a feeling you shouldn't touch this one either. Oh, thank God. 24. Oh, uh, okay. You felt like really sick, like you were going to throw up, but uh, you managed to like subdue it and keep it in. And then I guess last but not least, let me touch that blue. <laughs> it's just Elga just, just touching all the crystals. crystals. Yeah. 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 Uh, you reach out and touch the blue one. Make me a strength saving throw. God, oh, Elga's okay. just throwing herself She's into this whole thing. None she of likes this game. That 20, 26. You felt like some kind of force try to push you back, but you're so strong, you're able to hold your ground and uh, not get pushed. Okay, so none of these crystals you should really mess with. <laughs> Red one is probably safest, but I don't know where it takes us. I <laughs> like sometimes you really venture into like a Gru voice from Despicable Me. It's great. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Do you just touch them with your hand? I touched them with my hand, yeah. Can I like try and go to the like the Still haven't tested the purple water. Oh, yeah, wait, oh. we still haven't touched it. I'm just going to try and chip off one of the things. We already know what the crystals do if you touch oh, just, them. Yeah, not to touch them, like touch to, with a stick okay. to try and like. You're trying to chip more crystal. Yeah. To try make like a I, portable teleporter. No, yeah. you're Barney. <laughs> chip, I'm Chip. Uh, chip so crystal. Who's like, on first? If I get a, a red one or something, can I like take a. Uh, hit it with your walker, Barney. Yeah, I can do that. I guess hit it with my walker or I have a kit. I have a kit. I have a kit. Carpenter tool, like a, a, a knife or something from it. Sure. You you know, you approach it with your tools and try to break off a little piece. Make a dexterity check. Wonder what's going to happen to Barney. The 12. You try to very carefully extract the crystal, but it shatters and falls apart to dust. Okay. Mateed goes and uh, smells the purple water. It smells delicious, like fresh baked goods. It doesn't look like anything we've seen before, correct? No. Just to be clear, it's not water. It's some kind of purple fluid. Some sort of, yeah, sorry. I have cooking utensils, and so I, I kind of uh, dip like a spoon, let's say, a ladle. Yeah. So imagine you, you dip it in, you pull it out, and there's nothing there. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what I'm doing is I'm testing. Yeah, you dip it in, and you pull some out, I presume? Yeah. It's a very uh, viscous fluid, much thicker than water, but not like like it would like encumber you or anything. Yeah, you, you, mean, you ladle some out. Drink it. Drink it. Drink it. While while Chip is chanting, drink it. Drink it. Mateed flicks the spoon at him. <laughs> My mouth is wide and open aims too. for his mouth. <laughs> drink it. Do, do you try to move out of the way, or do you are you trying to catch us with your mouth? I uh, accept my fate <laughs> with okay. open arms. I trust Mateed with my life. Make a wisdom saving throw. Okay, there are worse saving throws to make. For you, no. No, seventeen. The purple fluid hits you in the face. You don't see this, Chip, but from everyone else's perspective, Chip falls to the ground uh, unconscious. So he's snoring on the ground, and the three of you are looking at him, and it seems like there's sparkling, simple shapes rising up from, like, from his body, floating up into the ceiling above him, and you see an image of a female tiefling crying. So are we seeing his thoughts or his dreams or something? Uh Carol. This stuff looks neat. Do I have any control of this in my own? Okay. No, you're 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 fast asleep. So I think we're seeing his dreams. Yeah, that's cool. This is yeah. We could inset people. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, somebody get a, a cup of that hot liquid out there and let's put your fingers in it. <laughs> oh my god. I feel like you would do that. Um if I set this bottle down, would you fill up some of that stuff with your ladle? You don't want to just like fill the bottle? No. We, oui. uh, come here, I will help you. Can I do that? Like set like a container down and Mateed like ladle it into the bottle? Sure. Mateed flicks some in Barney's face. <laughs> Mateed. Uh, Barney, if you want to try to dodge, make a dexterity I saving throw. Dodge. I want to try and dodge. It's a nine. The purple liquid hits you. You fall down to the ground unconscious. Barney also begins snoring. Really disgusting old man snore. Uh, what do we see? What do we see? You see from his body uh, sparkling simple shapes rising and it looks like a scruffy dog wagging its tail. Oh Aww. no, Barney's got a sad backstory. Scruffy dog? Yeah, just wagging its tail. Oh. Maybe it's not hit. Maybe he's just thinking about a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, 
I feel like if this is like the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, now Elga and Matita are just looking at each other. Yeah. Start flicking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Liquid. No, no, no. Uh, Matita doesn't uh, make any motion to flick anything yet. Uh, Could Elga. Uh, Elga try to wake Chip? Yeah. What do you do? Uh, just a gentle slap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, like a tap, like a tap. You you give him a, a gentle tap on the face, and Chip, your your eyes pop open. Ah, good morning. Were you dreaming? You're lying on the ground, and you open your eyes, and the first thing you notice is you're looking at the ceiling. See that the ceiling is covered in what seems to be like glittering constellations embedded in the rocks overhead. Oh, beautiful. That's so pretty. Yeah. I saw my wife. She was crying. Does, and now I'm going to cry. <laughs> does he Does he see, are the images of Carol or yeah. uh, the tiefling still there? No, when he wakes up, they, uh, they dissipate. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Mati does the same thing for Barney. Shakes him a up a gentle slap. Yeah, a gentle. <laughs> Give yeah. him a loving slap. You Barney. got a cute dog. I got my wife who is possibly dead. This isn't fair. You <laughs> Barney, were you wake up. There's a nightmare. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I seem to have dozed off. No, I'm sorry. That's okay. Were uh, you dreaming it, it about happens. anything, Barney? I don't remember. I, I have a hard time remembering my dreams. So do I. Well, what were we doing? Oh yes, we were putting some of this <laughs> stuff in this bottle. <laughs> Matite flicks it again in Barney's no. face. <laughs> <laughs> Make a dexterity saving throw, Barney. I don't think I was trying. I don't think I tried. To. He's too sleepy now. If you wouldn't try to dodge, then yeah, don't. The purple liquid hits you in the face and you fall to the ground again unconscious. I'm going for a short rest. <laughs> and what do we see? <laughs> nice. Two short rests. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it, it seems like the the dream picks up where it left off. The dog wagging its tail lets out one uh, excited, happy bark. Okay, and that, nothing else is manifesting. No. Okay. Matisse shakes Barney again. Oh, I'm sorry. I see. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just I didn't have my afternoon nap. I guess I have now. It is very cave-like down here. Very dreamy. Oh, oh yeah. Let's finish this bottle. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, Matid helps and scoops some in. Okay, yeah. We have to work on getting you better sleep at night. Yeah, I agree. Hey, maybe uh, he's got apnea. That snore was not good. Yeah. I know this is a long shot, but are there any, like, I don't know, loose ribs or uh, wooden pallets or something that we could float on with this? We're not in the skeleton, by the way. We're in a cave. Did Correct. that count as a short rest? Got it. I think a short rest is supposed to be an hour. Not an hour. So, no. No. Oh. <laughs> to be clear, though, this liquid purple pond is separating us from the no, next. No, it's just to the south. Okay. We have we have caves to the east that we can reach. Let's Correct. go to those caves. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's further tunnels and stuff. Matidi, hey, stop splishing and splashing. You're going to get us in trouble, all right? I'm You're asleep. Lifeguard on duty here. <laughs> Chip Haney, hey, pleasure to meet you. Are you back awake now? Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had my whistle because I'd blow it at you. All right, team, everybody, up and ready. Let's go. Okay. Look, look alive, look alive. Except you, Matid. The, uh, the rocks on the ceiling. You said they look like stars? Like, There's like glittering well, constellations embedded constellations. in the rocks. Yeah. You would have seen this too, Barney. I didn't say yeah. it, but you were laying oh, yeah, down. He was so, yeah, that's right. You would, you would also you, is it like stars, that, uh, constellations that we recognize? Do there's anything we can discern from them? or they... uh, Make an investigation check. 16. One in particular looks like you can pick something out. It looks like a group of dragons coming out of a mouth. Oh, so constellations are significant. A group of dragons coming out of a mouth? Yeah. Matid notices Barney just looking straight up at the ceiling, looks up as well. Make an investigation check. Love to. I look up as well. That's only a two. You have no idea what Barney's talking about. Yep. He's crazy. <laughs> uh, nine. It's like looking at one of those old 3D posters. You got, you're got like trying to cross your eyes yeah. and trying to uh, adjust your focus. You can't really pick anything out. Mm. All right. I guess I'll look. Look, now, <laughs> look right there. Look right there. See, can, I, can I help and point? Yeah, make an like, investigation check, uh, Elka. Now, look. Did you see it right there? Those stars uh, right there. Let me see if I see anything. Maybe 11. Uh, you don't see what Barney's talking about. Instead, you see what you think is like a humanoid holding a heart. Hmm. Maybe hmm. the heart of the dragon. Do I recognize the humanoid? No, it's like, since it's like a constellation, it's very like broad. There's no okay. like specific features that you could, are easy to pick Is out. He handsome and purple with a big tail. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an image. Dragons <sighs> coming out of a mouth. And then a, so, uh, uh, something holding a heart. A, a humanoid. humanoid. A humanoid. A can, can I take another gander at mine? Sure, and why the, not? The heart is the, the crystal? Or is it, it like a uh, heart? It's hard to tell. Okay. Again, it's just like stars in a constellation. I rolled a five. <laughs> Some people just can't see them, Chip. I don't know. <sighs> Personally, I always had trouble seeing those things. Yeah, you like I never me. saw them. Yeah. I, I, hate I, think, it. I think people, I thought people were messing with I me. I hate it. Yeah. yeah. No, I truly thought it was like a prank. Okay. We are uh, not, not seeing anything of interest. Uh, Matid heads to the east. You walk to the narrow winding passages to the east. There's a few um, shimmering crystals on the wall and the caves seem to kind of 
wind and split up and reconvene and make their way down to the south. You enter a wide grotto with an open skylight in the cave ceiling, a beam of morning light pouring into the cavern. To the south is a pond trickling with sparkling purple fluid, and to the north is a treasure trove of valuables. In the center, you see Frankenstein chained to a pedestal of rock, flanked by a massive winged creature of barbed black bones blazing with purple flames who recognize a skeleton. Your time is almost up, you seditious spawn. Perhaps I should slay you for your sins now and pay another visit to your village to sprinkle your ashes. Stein not afraid of Big Lizard? Stein save Frank Frank. No, please. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's saying. I beg you, don't harm anyone else. Then tell me where the crystal is. It's... <sighs> you said he was the thief that stole the crystal. Where is your proof? And out from the shadow steps a large skinless person with bulging white muscles and green veins. Ah! Oh. <laughs> cool your blazing bones, Galagon. This is the fun part. You've just got to know how to play the game. Eddie's lime green eyes glow and a wide splintered smile of jagged teeth comes across his face. He slowly drives a claw through the sutures holding Frankenstein's face together and the stitches start to rip one by one. Ah, please, somebody help me! Will they be helped? We're gonna have to find out next week. I don't like this Eddie. Yeah, Eddie's Eddie's no good. He's, he's, a, he's ripping Frankenstein. Yeah, he's ripping the stitches. Oh, God. Ouch! That's not nice. That's not sanitary. What's gonna happen? We'll have to find out in the next episode of Tales from the Stinky oh. Dragon. I'm gonna dive right into that purple bath. That's what I'm gonna do. Give me the purple juice. I can't wait for y'all to throw it on the rest of your party members. <laughs> I know, I kind of want to figure out what we're dreaming of. <laughs> this episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon was produced by Ben Ernst, written, edited, and composed by Michael Reisinger, with additional editing work by David Sonye. Also want to give a special thanks to some friends who provide voiceover for characters in this episode. The Alchemist, voiced by Blizzbear, at Blizzbear. Frankenstein, voiced by Ben Ernst, at Halcyon underscore Ben. Skeligon, voiced by Quentin Smith, at Quix underscore 18 and Eddie, voiced by Andrew Rosas, at Mr. Andrew Rosas. Tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. <laughs>